The Rich Meter is 113D shipped from China without a box. It came in a piece of bubble wrap. So there was no instruction manual to be seen. What it did come with, however, was this cheapy set of leads and a thermocouple. Now if we look at the leads off the get-go, wow, these things really suck. Yeah, I mean, you know, it has that super cheap feeling, plasticky. You can kind of actually bend them like so. Oh, okay. Yeah. <sighs> As I was saying, just super cheap, crappy quality. Now they do have a, um, there's no current rating, but it does say 1000 volts. Yeah, I don't think so. The tips are shrouded, but very, uh, not very much shrouding as you can see. They do fit in the meter pretty well, but what can I say? They just feel cheap. Um, I'll use them on and off for this video review, but definitely get yourself a better pair of leads. Also comes with thermocouple, your standard cheap, nothing fancy thermocouple because this does temperature. Alrighty, let's take a look at what we get with the meter itself. Let's turn it on. Hey, it works. Starts off with NCV or non-contact voltage detection mode. Turn it again, we are in amps, AC, DC. Now we do have a range selector switch here in the middle, and that is how you can change your settings. Now that's the backlight I've just enabled. It does go off rather quickly. Um, digit display, well, it's 6,000 count. I don't really like the display. It's a little ghostly for my liking. In fact, if we compare this to the recently reviewed and now my cheapy favorite, the Win Apex AT8101, even without the backlight on, the AT8101 just has a better look. The digits are just just work better, at least for me. And of course, with the ET8101, if you hold it down, you'll hear two beeps. And that means the backlight will not go off. Moving right along, we have our milliamps, ACDC. We have frequency, capacitance. And like I said, this does go up to a whopping 99 millifarad. Gotta love it. Here we have three channel select mode, which includes diode continuity and resistance. And we'll try and turn the light back on. Here we have temperature. Now this is nice because even though it ships with a thermocouple, as you can see, not needed. If you're not measuring anything other than the ambient temperature, you don't have to plug in the thermocouple. As you can see, it displays the temperature right away. And you can change that from Celsius to Fahrenheit simply by clicking the function button. Going down, millivolts, volts, AC, DC, and another off. Now, one of the other features that is kind of cool with this meter is the fact that in the continuity mode, we have vo both an audio as well as a visual display. And since we're in continuity, or since we're gonna be in continuity, as soon as I press the button, let's try it. So we'll try it first with the standard crappy leads just so we would get an idea of what we're looking at. Okay, here we are with the leads that the 113D ships with. If I press down, it's good, but you know, there's a lot of hit and misses. Good sounding buzzer, speaker, loud, quite audible. Now we're gonna try this with a different set of leads. Alrighty, here we go with a cheap set of good leads. Bang on, nice and loud, crisp, latched. And what I really like is that visual indicator. Let's get a close up of that. Oh, cause I like it so much. Okay, here we go. Beauty, beauty and the beast. I'm not sure who the beast is. Uh, maybe it's me, oh, anyway. Great, great indicator, good continuity. That's a thumbs up, folks. 
Coming up now is the voltage test and comparison. I've got the Winapix alongside the Rich Meters 113D and the Fluke 83 recently calibrated. Let's see how they all compare. Here we go. Going up right now to five volts even. 5.05, 5.05, and 5.05. Look at that. Taking it up, 8.2 volts. 8.26 for the WinAPX, 8.26 for the Rich Meters, and 8.24 for the Fluke. And now they've all settled and all more like 8.24 with the uh, APX slightly lower at 8.22. Up, up, and away. Here we go. We're going to take it to 15 volts. 15 volts even. 15.08 for the Fluke, 15.09 for the 113D, and 15.06 for the Apex. Here we go, up to 25 volts, 25 even, even according to the DC power supply. 25.16 for the Fluke, 5.18 for the 113, and 25.13 for the ET8101. Okay, let's max it out now. How high can we go? 31.4 volts according to the power supply. 31.49 for the Fluke. 31.45 for the ET8101. And 31.52 for the Rich Meters 113D. So all in all, spec wise, they're fairly close. Nothing definitely to worry about. And I'd have to say the 113D definitely holds its own. If anything, it might be slightly higher, um, but only by a couple of counts. So there you have it. Okay, now we are in capacitance mode. Once again, this has a 99 millifarad rating. We're gonna start off with a 10 millifarad capacitor and see if at least we have any issues here. And we're getting a visual indicator. And we're not getting an indicator. So we're just sitting with dead air. And, and there we go, 9.75 millifarad. Yep, just under 10,000 microfarad. Next is the big boy, 47,000 millifarad. Here we go. Drum roll, please. Survey says 43.67 millifarad. Hey, that works. And just so everyone knows, there are more caps coming on the way. I have a 100,000 millifarad cap, which I am anxiously waiting for coming in from the US. And I'll be able to put these meters definitely to the test to see if they can indeed meet that spec. But for now, 47,000 millifarad, I'm sorry, 47,000 microfarad, that's 47 millifarad, is as high as we can go. And it works, no problem. Okay, we are now in resistance and we are sitting at 9 mega ohm. Oh. We were sitting. Okay, that's just because the probes became a little loose. Okay, now at 8. 8 mega ohm and we have pretty well 8 spot on. I believe these uh, this decade box is 5% tolerance. So we're well within spec. Going down to 7. Spot on, fairly quick to settle. Take it down to six, bring it up down to five, 4.99, hey, five spot on. Take it down to four. Is it gonna settle, is it gonna settle? Here we go, perfect. I'm gonna say that's a four. Going all the way down to three, two, one, perfect. Hey, resistance works awesome. It's very fast and uh, very little fluctuation. So uh, yeah, in terms of the resistance mode, I'm liking it. Now we're in diode mode. Let's see if it's gonna light up our LEDs. Here we go. Let's try reversing that. No problem with the red and there's a forward voltage drop of 1.8 volts. Yellow, no problem again with the indicator. Down to the green, A-okay. Let's go to the white, nice and bright, 2.5 volts, finally. Oh, look at that, lights up the blue, no problem, 
excellent, excellent. So look at that in diode mode, that rich meter is 113D is giving us 3.252 volts on the output. So uh, plenty of juice to light up most LEDs. Okay, we are gonna try the NCV mode, non-contact voltage. Here we go. So it's fairly loud, quite audible, and we do have that visual indicator as well, which is pretty nice. I think that's a pass. The Rich Meters 113D also has a flashlight. Fairly bright. Quite consistent. Definitely will be of some use in the dark. I still think of things like this as more of a gimmick, but you know what? Troubleshooting electrical panel in your basement somewhere. Hey, why not? Fairly bright. Won't go out until you hold down on the button. And even then, there we are. So, pretty versatile. Hey, you never know when you need a multimeter to troubleshoot your fridge. At least this one, you can stick it. Yeah, literally. It's got a nice magnet on the back. Clips, no problemo. It ain't going anywhere. Awesome. Hmm. I wonder what's in there to eat. Oh, I might as well eat later. The meter has a really nice ergonomic feel to it. The boot itself, nice. It's not too plasticky. Same time, it's not really ultra flukish quality. But you know what? Hey, for the price, it works. And if you're really observant, you'll notice that there actually is a similarity. Much like cars, I think multimeter manufacturers, when they get a whiff of a, a new design or what have you, they like to mimic one another. So yeah, there's a definite, uh, definite look-alike here. Okay, so here we are inside the multimeter and we'll start off with the outer shell. As you can see, these are the pin connectors. They connect directly to the PCB on the other side and the three batteries are what feed the meter. The connectors for the pads are here. So this is another method of um, the power connection as opposed to having those wonderful wires coming out of the PCB circuit. Uh, this is much cleaner, much uh, better in my opinion. Fortunately, there is no shielding. Um, too bad, so sad. I can't say it enough. I really wish even the cheap multimeters would have at least some basic shielding. EMF is everywhere and I just don't see why they can't do that. Now we're going to concentrate solely on the PCB. So we'll start with the input headers themselves, the jack headers here at the bottom. These are the split type variety. They go into a plastic housing. It is fairly well done. The soldering itself is, I give it around a seven out of 10. There is gonna be some wear and tear over time um, because the plastic housing is just not in, probably as good as it can be. There's no other support. But that being said, it's still relatively uh, decent. Moving up to the current side, you guessed it, we have a replaceable glass fuse. So this is much better than some of these uh, variants we see that the fuse or resistor is used in lieu of a standard fuse, making it impossible to service if you blow that fuse. So at least it is standard glass size fuse. And I did check the rating, it is a 10 amp fuse. If we follow that circuit here, what do you notice? Where's the current shed? That's because here is the current shunt. This is a current sensing resistor. And this actually will replace your standard current shunt. So you don't have that legacy style shunt being utilized. Here you just have something which I think actually works fairly well in this sort of um, uh, meter. They pretty robust. They have a constant current rating of 
I believe some can go as high as 35 amps. They're fairly stable and they have a high pulse power rating. So you do have a current shunt and it is this current sensing resistor. Moving down the line on the voltage side, here we have a 600 milliamp fuse. Once again, replaceable glass fuse. And as well, we have one, I don't think you can see it. I'll try and zoom out a bit right here. My wife would call that a sick frog. Well, yeah, it's a lonely little PTC and rather sad looking one at that, but at least it's there. We also have, count them, one, two, three. These are 300 ohm each. So that is our resistor array. And this is, once again, on the current side. So we got some resistor clamping, as well as the PTC and the glass fuse. We also have a diode clamp going on here. And if we move up here, you can see you know what this is? This is a voltage regulator. And I believe it's the uh, 6006 series. I uh, know the 6206 series. And this embodies a, um, a driver transistor, precision reference voltage, uh, error correction circuit. So it, it's all there. Now, I'm not 100%, but I think there might be different flavors um, with this meter in terms of the uh, voltage regulator placement. Uh, I believe on some other meters it's actually located higher up on the PCB, but it um, doesn't really matter. Moving up the line, here we have a couple of empty glass fuse placements, or I would assume that's what they would have been there for. Perhaps this was a prototype PCB for another multimeter, but they're not being utilized. Further up, we have our generic IC, which is all cob. Here is the speaker, or the piezo. In this case, it's fairly loud. And as well, here we have the NCV detection. And I'm just gonna move this better so we can see. Now, on a lot of meters, you have the NCV is nothing more than a, a wire, and a pretty lame wire at that. Here, they actually have a fairly robust looking metal filament that is soldered directly to the PCB. So that is gonna definitely give you a lot higher sensitivity um, when you're doing your uh, voltage detection. So fairly robust looking and uh, I like it. As well here, this does have a flashlight and this is the LED soldered directly onto the PCB and that is what is driving the flashlight. So, generally speaking, um, I like what I see. Once again, don't forget, this is not an expensive multimeter, but my God, you've seen the horror stories of some of these meters that uh, I've reviewed in the past. And at least this one is clean, fairly robust. You do have the replaceable fuses. You have your current sensing resistor here, AKA the current shunt. Um, pretty well, a lot of the bells and whistles that you would expect in any multimeter. But, um, you know, for a cheap multimeter, I'm quite happy with this in terms of the input protection. No, it's not a fluke, but hey, it's 20 bucks, right? Coming up next, closing thoughts. Closing thought off on the Rich Meters 113D. I like it. It's small, it's compact, it has a lot of functionality. It's fairly well built for a cheap multimeter. I've seen definitely 10 times worse. You get a lot of bang for your buck. Do I like it as much as my Win Apex? ET8101, no, that's still my favorite so far. But that being said, it does do a lot, and you can do a lot worse than the Rich Meters 113D. A lot of functionality, uh, it looks good. You've got your visual as well as the audible continuity. Input-wise, um, pretty decent. It's got a lot of neat little features. It's fast, fairly accurate. True RMS, 6,000 count, has a high capacitance range. Got a lot good going for it. I'm gonna give the Rich Meters 113D a solid 3.5 out of 5 stars. Thanks for watching this review. Remember, keep on testing.